He also and he also just launched his own business. So Joseph, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you, Michaela. Good afternoon to everybody. Um, Michaela, again, thank you for that warm and wonderful introduction. Uh, my name is Joseph Sklenar. I am a current full-time MBA candidate, um, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, my journey, and what my future plans um, and endeavors are. Um, before I get too far into the presentation, I would like to first off um, just thank the wonderful folks here at both um, CCEI as well as the Connecticut Small Business Development Center. I would not be here um, today talking to you and sharing my experiences um, without them. Um, I've been afforded a wonderful opportunity via Professor Roy McGloin um, and his team in the uh, Business Consulting Accelerator, um, which we conducted over the summer. Um, and we hope to have um, future MBA students take advantage of this chance and uh, opportunity to uh, open their own consulting firms. Um, so without further delay, let's dive in. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so going to start off with a definition here. Inflection point is a noun, a point of a curve in, at which a change in direction or curvature occurs. In business, a time of significant change in a situation or a turning point. I chose this as the title for my presentation because without a doubt, uh, my enrollment in the UConn MBA and my subsequent learnings, connections, trials, tribulations, um, they've all been a significant shift um, in my own uh, life personally as well as professionally. Um, life in the business world is all about leveraging experiences and relationships to find useful and interesting opportunities for um, human connection, uh, human interaction, self-betterment, um, and a sense of fulfillment. Um, however, this road that I am on, uh, it's not always been smooth or linear. Um, and with this presentation, I hope to pass on what I've learned um, in order to maybe provide like a roadmap for others interested um, in pivoting themselves. Um, before we go to the next slide here, I'd like to ask the audience uh, for a little bit of participation at first. Um, so I'd like to uh, ask you to cast your own memories backwards now to a time, maybe a particularly vivid scene from your childhood that sticks out in your brain. Take a few seconds to conjure up the image and uh, transport yourselves back in time. Some of you may be thinking back to your formative first days of school, sheepishly waving goodbye to your parents from the bus window, others to uh, the sheer excitement at the birth of a younger sibling, not yet realizing you were no longer an only child. Um, some might envision the enthusiasm of joining your first sports team and the lead up to the initial practices and games, um, while others might fondly remember uh, meeting their friends uh, on the playground, living carefree, buzzing around in a flurry of motion. Um, for me personally, this memory is of my grandparents' cozy, um, somewhat ugly wood paneled kitchen uh, and table, uh, the room alive with chatter, laughter, uh, warm feelings of family, uh, my two siblings and I sitting perched on uh, wooden chairs eagerly awaiting the handcrafted meal that is just moments away. My grandmother, stoic and focused, dons an oven mitt to check the breaded chicken cutlets sizzling away in the 1950s style oven. She's small in stature, but her personality is large with an ice cold stare that could turn Medusa or misbehaving children into stone. Uh, my grandfather stands over a large mixing bowl, snow white, slicked back hair and chunky 80s style bifocals adorn his face with his Santa Claus belly gently resting on the counter as he whips and fluffs up the accompanying mashed potatoes. Um, I'm there with my two siblings, the three kids. Um, our eyes light up as we prepare to playfully fight over the two egg beaters covered in buttery mashed potatoes. Surely the best in the world, my young brain quietly ponders to itself. Um, a steely matriarchal glare surely follows as the kids suddenly remember how to share and play nicely. My grandparents, Tom and Barbara, at first glance, appear an odd couple, but their harmony in the kitchen is unmatched with the components of the meal ready with uncanny timing and precision. A buffet uh, setup style setup is on the island kitchen, meaning that everyone can serve themselves, gather silverware, and then sit down to eat. Well, everyone except for grandma. She never sits down, even when eating. So between steaming mouthfuls of chicken, mashed potatoes, I look around at various family members uh, gathered around, my grandparents, parents, brothers, sister, uncle, not realizing how lucky I am. A home-cooked meal, a vibrant atmosphere, surrounded by loved ones. What more could I ask for? Looking back on this memory, I realized that this was pure bliss, a tiny moment in time that would leave an indelible mark on me. I did not really realize it initially, but the seeds of my passion for cooking were sown. However, they would need careful uh, watering and tending before sprouting some years later. Uh, next slide, please. So that's uh, an important story to me. Um, as I previously mentioned, my 
passion for cooking and family and um, having everyone come together around the dinner table, uh, you know, that that memory was uh, stoked from a young age. Um, so just like a little bit more background on myself here. I'm born and raised a uh, resident of Hartford, uh, Connecticut area with deep connections throughout the surrounding towns of Elmwood, West Hartford, Avon, Bloomfield, and others. Um, as previously stated, I'm a current full-time MBA student specializing in both finance and business analytics. I also attended um, UConn for my undergraduate degree as well with a um, double major in history and political science. Um, I've worn quite a few different hats in my life, um, but the main uh, bulk of my previous work experience comes in both the food service and management sectors. Um, actually, my first real job was at a local bakery where I learned the principles of workstation organization, timing, uh, customer interaction, and most importantly, hard work and punctuality. Um, if anyone has ever worked in a bakery before, you also know that the hours are not particularly conducive to, to night owls. I would often find myself clocking in at, you know, five or six in the morning um, and on holidays even earlier just to make sure that our customers had everything they needed. Um, so business. Um, so hold on one second. Um, af after that initial experience at the bakery, um, my next port of call um, in the food service industry would lead me um, to an award-winning local pizzeria um, as a fresh-faced 21-year-old uh, UConn college graduate. Um, I was simply looking for steady pay and reliable hours. I didn't really um, have a plan uh, upon graduation. I was, um, I believe I'd switched my major um, two or three times throughout the experience. I was flirting with both um, uh, law school. I had uh, at one point wanted to um, become a teacher. Um, and, you know, I was not really aware at the time what I wanted to do exactly. Um, but, you know, I was able to um, uh, find gainful employment at the pizzeria. I started off as a line cook, um, or as we call it in the business, a decorator. I was taught the um, delicate balance between both speed and efficiency, the basics of kitchen prep, knife skills, um, as well as the, as well as the ability to work collectively and cohesively as a you know functioning unit on a Friday night. Um, if anyone's ever been to a restaurant, you know how crazy and chaotic the dinner service can be and behind the counter and in, in the kitchen you know it's it, it's it's really something something to experience um so i spent some time there kind of cultivating my skills gaining experience um interacting with others um, just kind of adding more strings to my bow eventually um, a management position uh, within the restaurant opened up and became available um, and after a brief conversation um, i jumped at the opportunity to you know try my hand at something new and exciting um, i like to think of myself as adventurous and i kind of grasped the opportunity with both hands i was able to dive head first um, into um, a, a then unfamiliar world but would then become more familiar um, after my enrollment in the mba so i um, become familiar with such terms as, um, you know, like uh, labor costs, percentages, um, rec uh, register reconciliation, taking care of the month, uh, the nightly deposits, um, scheduling, conflict resolution, um, staff motivation. You know, this was this was not, you know, an easy, uh, an easy road in the beginning. It was bumpy at first, um, but as with any, you know, new position or new hobby, um, practice does make perfect. Um, I took I took pride in my work. Um, it was something that I could, uh, you know, look look fondly back on. Um, crafting these Neapolitan style pizzas for our patrons to to enjoy. You know, interacting with with customers up at the counter, kind of thriving off the energy that was, you know, being being pumped into the business. Just you know, a flurry of activity, just nonstop motion. Um, you know, for anyone that's worked in a restaurant before, um, you can just picture yourself, you know, the calm before the storm on a Friday night or a weekend. Um, it's, it's pretty much unmatched, you know, the rush, the rush of anticipation, um, you know, making, going around, making sure everyone's in the proper workstations, you know, cause you know, what's going to come in the next like five, 10, 20, 30 minutes. It's just going to be a hailstorm of, you know, salads and pizzas and tickets and, you know, everything under the sun. Um, if you could somehow capture that, you know, rush in a bottle, it's like super exhilarating. You know, I'm sure there would be, you know, a market out there somewhere for it. Um, but ultimately, um, my experiences, although fulfilling in the restaurant, I ultimately knew that this was not the life for me long term or moving forwards, but I could use these past experiences in a positive way to affect real change in my life. Uh, next slide, please. 
So with um, so much experience in the food service and management um, sectors, uh, the question I was asking myself um, was how would I ultimately make um, the career pivot and change my future um, job prospects um, as well as um, you know prospects for, for earning money? Um, the next slide here um, kind of illustrates a few of the problems that I encountered along the way. Um, so I come from now, I'll speak candidly. I come from a liberal, liberal arts uh, background, history and political science, as I previously mentioned. Um, a lot of my um, classmates come from, you know, such diverse backgrounds as like accounting, finance, uh, engineering, very quantitative um, backgrounds. I, I really didn't um, have a predilection or experience in, you know, math studies or anything like that. So for instance, when I'm studying for the GMAT to get into business school here, um, where I excelled on the verbal portions of, of the GMAT, I would, I would often struggle with the, with the more, you know, quantitative math aspects. Um, as previously mentioned, classes like statistics, finance, which would later become my concentration, funnily enough, um, they seemed unachievable at first, you know, like I was banging my head against the wall, I, I would, I'd study them, you know, these subjects, and I couldn't really raise my floor, particularly, you know, in particular regarding the GMAT, and it was just, you know, frustrating, I, I felt like an outsider in my own body, I would, you know, constantly uh, question if this was the right path for me, you know, I ended up taking the GMAT, I want to say three or four times, um, but just have to have to keep with it and um, eventually you can you know learn different different techniques different ways to synthesize these different experiences um, you know uh, tra translating my skills from the kitchen to the classroom it wasn't always the easiest and I felt as though I was sort of you know lagging behind others in that area I should be you know more proficient if I'm going to be in business school and I you know I, I, I should have like a base level for for all of these skills um, so translating the skills uh, from the kitchen to the classroom was not always um, easy. Uh, lastly, um, I have a 10 year gap from my undergraduate to my graduate studies, meaning essentially I have to relearn how to study, how to budget time, how to budget energy um, and you know, meet academic deadlines. Um, so the real question is, how do, we, uh, how do we challenge ourselves to improve when we you know, encounter these problems? Next slide, please. So, the, the, the challenge of, of synthesizing these disparate ideas and experiences um, in order to make ourselves better, it was definitely a challenge. Um, would my experiences at the pizzeria and other food service um, jobs di directly translate into the real business world? Um, I, I would argue the answer is both yes and no. While not a direct um, translation, um, my time in management and food service would give me a different perspective. Did we have deadlines to meet? you bet those customers would come in early on a Friday night. Did we have to use conflict resolution um, in order to solve problems? If anyone's ever worked, uh, you know, with a full front of house on a Friday night and your entire staff moving at 100 miles an hour, you know, there were some arguments, there were some fights. Um, it, it's not something I'm unfamiliar with. Um, inventory management, I mean, where do you even begin with these food prices? Um, you know, as, as, as my little anecdote shows, um, you know the translation from 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 the uh, restaurant world to the business world is there. Um, it's alive and kicking, um, and it's just about finding those ways that you can weave these lessons that you learn, um, you know, from a completely different sector, and how you can utilize them, you know, moving forwards and and synthesize them together. Um, it's 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 about these, you know, find, finding the you know the moments where you can use these learning lessons in these super challenging, um, you know, oftentimes uh, hot and sweaty moments. You know, how can you how can you uh, you know bring together two separate worlds and, and and synthesize them as one? Next slide, please. Okay, so um, emotional intelligence. Uh, this is this is one of the most important lessons I believe I've learned so far in my MBA journey. Um, emotional intelligence is, defi is defined as the ability to um, identify and manage uh, one's own emotions um, as well as other people's emotions. Um, and on the wheel here, we have you know different um, different aspects, I guess you could say, of emotional intelligence. Um, so we have social skills, uh, managing relationships. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these ideas, I had learned without really realizing how you know critical and important they would be in in future lessons. Um, so, for instance, um, you know, uh, social skills, managing relationships um, that benefit everyone involved, making people feel like they're part of a team. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, our workers at the restaurant would be. Um, 
high school or college age individuals, they might need um, certain individuals might need a certain type of guidance, uh, an arm around the shoulder if they needed it, or, you know, a, a harsh word to, to make them move faster. I mean, you kind of have to read people based upon the situation. Um, Self-awareness is also important, which is the ability to recognize um, your own emotions. Um, for anyone that knows me outside of this presentation, I, they know me as a pretty calm, cool customer. I don't really have highs and lows, peaks and troughs in terms of my uh, mentality. Um, you, you bet on a Friday night, I'm you know, at, at the restaurant, I had moments where you just want to explode and, you know, lose your cool, but that really doesn't, you know, that really doesn't benefit everybody at large. You know, your, your job there as the manager is to motivate the team to, to bring these different, you know, types of people together and, and have everyone work collectively as a team. Um, and people, people pick up on that too. So, you know, if you're, if you're the type to get, you know, hot and bothered or, or lose your cool, your, your staff is, they're going to respond to that and they might not need you in those critical, you know, moments when, you know, when, when another hand is needed, they're, they're less responsive. So it was always basically my, um, you know, what I tried to do was, was, you know, the golden rule, you know, treat others how you'd like to be treated. And, and people really do respond to that, whether it's, you know, in a boardroom, whether it's, you know, as, as a manager, whether it's as someone lower, um, everybody responds differently. So you need to kind of take these case, you know, case by case and, and, and decide internally, like what's, what's the best for you moving forwards. Um, again, self-regulation. So being able to, you know, manage your emotions and impulses. Um, empathy is also a big aspect of this. Um, you know, being, being a, a listening ear for people, you know, one of my, one of my favorite, um, favorite sayings is, you know, the fact that we should uh, listen tw uh, twice as much as we talk, you know, you have two ears um, and one mouth. Um, I think that's a very important lesson, letting letting others, you know, even if it seems like they're complaining, just let people kind of get it off their chest and be like a listening, you know, confidant that they can speak to because sometimes people just want to get something off their chest. And, you know, if it, it's, it's such a little ask to, you know, listen to somebody for, you know, 30 seconds or one minute kind of complain about their problems and get it off their chest. And if it improves their mentality and you guys can like, you know, um, be better for it moving forwards. It's, it's such a simple, you know, just empathize with your staff and, and, and your, you know, your other workers and, you know, decide upon the best course of action together. You know, a lot of times I'd ask like what they thought we should do, you know, what, 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 what does the average worker think is the best way forward? It's just because I'm in a position of power doesn't mean I'm above, you know, um, learning their point of view, or maybe I didn't think about something in a certain way. Um, so just kind of empathizing with others, maybe they've seen a problem and, and you haven't encountered it. Um, and then finally, motivation, um, enjoying what you do. You know, I, I, I was at the restaurant for many years. I, I wouldn't have been there if I didn't enjoy what I did. Um, I love, you know, as, as my previous story um, illustrates, I, you know, I have a passion for cooking. I love to, you know, uh, make people happy. And, you know, for me, like the restaurant um, industry and the restaurant world was like a safe place for me. I could, I could express myself. I could, you know, try new things. I wasn't, you know, scared of failing. I knew, I knew the business inside and out. Um, so my, my motivation was definitely there. Um, you know, I, I like collectively working on problems as a team, you know, there's, you know, a sense of satisfaction, you know, obviously it's incredibly busy on a, on a weekend night, Friday or Saturday night, but, you know, as you're kind of winding the, the night down and, and everybody's kind of like cleaning, um, you know, in their own corners, there's kind of like a little like peace and calm that comes over. It's just, you know, you, you look back like, wow, we, we did all that, you know, it's, it, it, it's a feeling, uh, if anyone that's ever worked in a restaurant before, it's a feeling that's unlike any other, it's, um, it, it's, it's quite something, um, also, and, uh, finally on the, on this slide here, um, I'm not sure, uh, how many of my, my classmates are out there in the audience right now, um, but I just found it interesting that, um, I'm a huge, uh, football soccer fan, um, and, uh, um, uh, I'm a fan of, of Chelsea. So if anyone in the audience uh, knows me, they know I'm a huge Chelsea fan. Um, and it's very interesting because um, the the new manager that my team just hired actually has uh, a graduate degree in emotional intelligence. And this is, um, you know, kind of a, a little allegory or, or anecdote that that's interesting because, you know, you have someone at the at the at the top of sports, the peak of their profession. And, you know, he's uh, the, the new manager is called Graham Potter, um, English guy, very, um, 
very well traveled. He stepped out of his comfort zone, moved abroad early when he was young. And like I said, he's hired as, you know, at, at the pinnacle of sport with a degree in emotional intelligence. So it just goes to show you that managers on any level, whether it's, you know, a restaurant or a kitchen manager, all the way up to, you know, the head coach of arguably one of the biggest uh, football or soccer teams in the world, you can, you can find value in, in, in emotional intelligence, uh, listening to your staff, responding, internalizing, you know, what they say and, you know, just, just being a good manager for it. So it's an interesting little fact that just happened within the past couple of days. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So what's next? As I previously stated, um, I, uh, through the help of, of the, the BCA, the Business uh, Consulting Accelerator, um, I was able to um, pitch my idea to, to Professor uh, McGloin. I was able to um, secure um, a spot in the accelerator. Um, you know, if you had asked me, let's say, five, 10, even 15 years ago, if I myself would be a business owner one day, I would have probably laughed in your face. I would not have had that, um, you know, anywhere on my radar, but you know, when an opportunity um, presents itself and, um, you know, with the help of everybody in CCEI, I was able to, um, you know, become a business owner and kind of use um, my my past experiences um, in conjunction with my, you know, my education in the UConn MBA and um, kind of, um, you know, establish my own firm and, and, and really kind of step out of my comfort zone. You know, it's, it's different when you're a business owner um and and a consultant it's it's not something i have experience in i don't really have you know um an entrepreneurial uh drive uh from the beginning it's it's been you know challenging it's it's been a learning lesson um but you know i'm i'm happily able to, to uh you know take take the bull by the horns and 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 see what the future holds um so next slide please so I'll introduce uh, my consulting firm here, uh, J3 Consulting. Um, so J3 is a firm dedicated um, to providing local family-owned restaurants with the customized training insights and strategies um, that are designed to improve um, efficiency as well as to integrate um, contemporary best practices into both uh, well-established uh, restaurants as well as um, new ventures. I thought this was, um, an interesting space for me because of my past experiences, as well as, um, as I said, you know, everything that I'm, I'm learning in the MBA program, it kind of just seemed like a natural kind of straddling between my past life and my new, you know, academic life moving forwards. Um, so in in a COVID world uh, with uh, fraught with ever tightening margins, um, increased prices due to inflation um, and supply chain issues, constant staff turnover, um, onboarding. Um, these are just a few of the issues that J3 is seeking to fill in the market um, and provide businesses with you know, expertise, knowledge, and creative problem solving um, that I've personally seen in my over 10 years in the industry. Um, I'd like to think of myself not as an outsider, but someone with, um, you know, I, I, I have knowledge of, of what makes these restaurants tick. You know, I've, I've worked with um, a small uh, family owned restaurant before, you know, I'm, I'm coming in I'm, I'm able to, you know, sympathize with these business owners, kind of understand what they have going on behind the scenes, um, you know, really kind of get under the hood and, 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 and look at it from, you know, from an industry perspective. Um, so here at J3, we, we seek to help family owned businesses um, both transition and upgrade their operations um, to not only strengthen their customer experience, um, which to me was um, a huge aspect of it. You know, you, you want to have people um, come in, enjoy the food, but also so kind of, you know, have, have some takeaways like, oh, that was, you know, a fantastic um, service that we had here. Oh, like their, you know, their staff really is very attentive to all your needs. Um, as a lifer in the industry, um, I know firsthand what it feels, uh, what it feels like to be short staffed on a busy night, you know, the need to continuously uh, train new workers week after week, um, the frustrations felt by um, these uh, increasing food prices um, and untimely, untimely shipments um, due to lack of, you know, delivery staff, for instance, having, having a shipment show up at 6 p.m. on a Friday night. Like I've, I've been there before. I, I, I know, I know what it's like, um, you know, so uh, we, we seek to, um, 
in the beginning, um, you know, identify the novel strengths that each establishment comes with, um, as well as place an emphasis upon these um, these things that you hold so dear to your heart. So, you know, these are family owned um, restaurants with their own traditions, their recipes, their culture. That's what makes, you know, each each place unique. And, and that's what some another thing that, you know, attracted me to 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 the industry. You know, I I worked almost exclusively in family owned restaurants. I've I don't really have experience in, in the in the corporate chain, you know, in the corporate uh, chain restaurant world, um, you know. So our our goal here at J3 is to kind of give these restaurants um, the tools that they need and the procedures um, that they require to, you know, not only um, eliminate waste and and maximize their profits, um, but we want to, you know, be able to uh, deliver quantifiable, uh, data driven results for these customers. You know, it, it's one it's it's one thing, you know, talking the talk, but you need to be able to, you know, back up, you know, these, these restaurant owners are looking for hard evidence. Like how, how can we increase their bottom line? How can we lessen the food costs? How can we, you know, get them fully staffed up, you know, ready for the coming winter months, um, et cetera. Um, lastly, you know, as, as a lifelong, um, Hartford native, you know, I, I understand the local food community. I've had my finger on the pulse for a while. Um, I've talked to, you know, countless, um, owners, managers, and staff, you know, I, I know the difficulties that these um, restaurants are facing uh, coming back from COVID, you know, um, not having uh, any, any dining room, and then all of a sudden needing to hire servers overnight. You know, I know the long hours, I know the no weekends, the no vacations, the open to close shifts, you know, I can, I fully empathize with those that are still in the industry. Um, so I, I feel that, you know, myself and J3 are, you know, uniquely positioned to leave a lasting, um, um, and sustainable positive impact for these family businesses. Um, next slide, please. So this slide here, um, just a few of the services that are um, on offer um, initially from, from J3. So the first uh, offering is the uh, restaurant audit report. So this is a um, comprehensive front to back analysis of a restaurant. Um, so this is going to include, uh, you know, data driven reports, um, interviews with both um, the owners, uh, the managers, support staff, customers, and kind of, you know, coalescing all that together to um, almost like a like triage or, or diagnose, you know, where there's room for improvement. What what are you guys doing well? Where what can we, you know, can we raise the floor? Are we hitting a glass ceiling here? Um, so we want to provide them with a plan of action moving forwards um, to maximize not only um, the customer experience, you know, we were looking to, for instance, um, improve the Yelp reviews, you know, if, 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 if we're at 3.5 instead of like 4.5 or four stars, what can we do to make that half star improvement? You know, if, if somebody's drawing an arbitrary cutoff line, what can we do to reach that, you know, four star uh, Yelp review? Um, how can we make sure that the customers keep coming back in? How can we, um, increase uh, owner profitability as well because ultimately you know a family owned business is a business it's it's there to make money it's it's there to you know provide you know food on the table for for the for the restaurant owners themselves um, so some of the other offerings of the restaurant audit could include um, curated job postings um, interviews with potential hires you know the 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 turnover in the restaurant industry is is very high um, you know so what better way to do that is then to get the right correct workers in you know in the door first off instead of having to spend all this time and energy and effort onboarding you know week after week it, it becomes kind of a you know a monotonous routine at a certain point um so you know the the majority of the time will be spent um uh staff owner and customer interviews workspace optimization um and then the reports and the breakdowns um one of the other offerings is also the uh, startup or the new venture guidance. So as the name says, it's pretty self-explanatory. This offering is catered towards uh, new ventures and startups that may need a boost, um, you know, when it comes to uh, initial plans, finding an appropriate storefront, hiring and or training staff. Um, we can look at things such as, you know, uh, menu design, um, kind of unique ways to get customers, you know, in, in the door first off, you know, advertising campaigns. Um, I actually spoke with a current UConn student who harbors um, ambitions to one day open her own cafe. So um, I thought this would be an important um, offering to, uh, to have on the board as well. Uh, much of the same principles apply um, from the first restaurant audit report, um, but as we're starting from the beginning here. 
you know, careful detail can be paid to, you know, the interior design, how we utilize the space, you know, the menu design, um, advertising, um, and so on. Um, and then lastly here, we have the menu analysis. Um, so this is going to be a systematic uh, line by line um, analysis to provide um, both popularity um, as well as profit. Um, so if you'd like to queue up the next slide, I can go a little bit more in depth into that. Um, so in this offering, we split um, the entire menu on offer into one of four categories, um, as shown on the whiteboard or on the slide here. Um, you know, careful detail is paid to uh, what the customer wants and needs are, as well as the profitability, profitability and, and the margins that the restaurant owners and managers will be particularly keen on. Um, Joe, do you still have your audio? Can you, I'm sorry, can you guys hear me still? Yes, now you're there. Oh, okay. I have my headset shut off. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Great, right in the middle of a point there. So sorry about that. Um, so just jumping back to, to the menu analysis here. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're breaking this down line by line here. Um, you know, so this is gonna come with um, customized reports, guidelines, plans of action moving forwards. Um, as you can see from the, from the matrix here, I figure all my, you know, MBA or, uh, or uh, otherwise uh, students here recognize the two by two matrix. So um, this is a little interesting, um, you know, matrix that we can jump into. So, so the cat, um, the menu can be broken down into four different categories here. So you have um, the popularity on the Y axis um, and the gross profit on the X axis. So um, in the top right corner, you have your stars. So these are your can't miss items, high popularity, high profitability. These are the menu items that, you know, customers keep coming in for, they keep asking about, maybe it's a rotating special only available for like certain uh, you know, days or months out of the year, that's a good way to generate some buzz. Um, you have your workhorses um, in the top left corner. So these are highly popular dishes, but they're low profit. So these might get people in the door, um, you know, butts and seats, so to speak, but you're not making too much, too much profit on them. They're kind of like your, your staples or your cornerstones. Um, in the bottom left corner, um, dogs. So these are the low popularity, low profit items. These are the items that we're going to be circling in a big red, you know, marker or pen on the menu, um, because they're not they're not offering much. They're not getting people in in the door, you know, to to dine on them. And they're also, you know, either low profit or, or they're losing money. So this is where the menu analysis can be very helpful. You know, we don't want to be hemorrhaging cash on something, you know, with a seven day shelf life, and after five days, you know, the container is still three quarters full. So um, if we could kind of, you know, weed those, weed those items out, then that would be great. Um, and then in the bottom right corner, we have um, the puzzles. So these are um, low popularity, but high profit. So, you know, these could be items that um, customers, uh, they just may not understand what, you know, what the item is. Um, is it um, easy for them to tell from, you know, from, from the description on the menu? Um, they're high profit, but we just kind of need to, you know, um, generate um, some more buzz for them, whether this could be, you know, um, some more advertising or kind of just training, you know, the staff and, and, the, and the wait staff to, you know, emphasize these more, up, upselling these items. You know, there, there is, you know, there's margin there, there's, there's profit there, but it just needs to be you know emphasized so um the the menu analysis um can go a long way towards you know being a you know a, an initial starting step um kind of um for how we can you know kind of have this um you know root and stem analysis of a restaurant next slide please Okay, so um, as we continue to grow here at J3, um, you know, these are some of my my future plans. So uh, the, the business was was established over the summer. So um, J3 is kind of still in the initial stages of customer discovery, for instance. So um, this could be as simple as, uh, you know, going on Yelp, looking at local restaurants, seeing 
where there's room for improvement. This could be just cold calling or just going into storefronts and kind of just, you know, talking to customers, networking. Um, anyone that's worked in the restaurant industry knows that um, it's kind of like its own little, you know, uh, biome. It's its own little kind of um, organic sphere. Um, you might not get a, a sale or a lead at the first place you go into, but they might have a friend who, you know, uh, owns like a bakery, for instance, or they own a French restaurant and they're kind of, you know, willing to, you know, go, go out on a limb and, and vouch for you. So these these first impressions and, and how you present yourself, it, it's very important, you know, being able to go back to the, uh, you know, being able to go back to the you know, emotional intelligence slide and kind of just recognize, you know, what people's needs are and be able to pick up on these on these clues. Um, continued learning. So uh, I was talking to, to Rory yesterday and, um, you know, one of the cool things about being a consultant and working in this space is that your, you know, your, your job is never done. There's always some more, um, you know, uh, topics or more theories that you can engage with and kind of just add more strings to your bow. I'm a very inquisitive person by nature. So for me, the continued learning part is one of the most interesting aspects of this, you know, being able to um, have the humility to admit when you don't know something, you know, being able to say, I need more, you know, I need more uh, learning in this, you know, in this, in this, um, in this sphere. So, um, um, that's definitely something to, you know, just try to try to learn something new every day, even if it's just one, you know, one thing every day you can learn, you'll be better for it. That's, you know, over 300 things at the at the end of this, you know, at the end of the year, um, social media. So this is your um, this is your Facebook posting. This is your, you know, your Instagram posting, um, generating buzz uh, for 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 the business, kind of you know laying you know laying the groundwork and and kind of seeing it sprout you know from from the seeds. It's it's really exciting to to think about moving forwards, um, and then additional services. So. Um, as as the folks in CCEI I know, one of my uh, passions <laughs> recently is is food trucks. You know, how how do I get into that space? How do I you know carve out something potentially for uh, an additional service? Um, you know, I, I live in an apartment complex where you know monthly or uh, uh, you know biweekly they'll have food trucks come in, and that's kind of where my you know passion for this comes. Um, it's it's an interesting concept. You know, you're not beholden to you know a certain place. You can travel around. You can kind of, you know, see different, you know, places. So um, just kind of some future plans for the, uh, for the business here. Next slide, please. So um, if anyone has any questions for me at this point, um, that's pretty much all I have. I'm sorry, my phone is going off in the background. Um, so yeah, just really exciting time. Um, really thankful for the opportunity to be able to talk to everybody today, kind of pass along some of my, you know, experiences, uh, what the future holds. Um, you know, I as I said, I I I love learning more about the business and getting more familiar with, you know, um, just every aspect of it. You can really kind of dive headlong into it and you can really go in any direction you'd like. Um, it's it's a very um interesting uh you know, business to get into consulting. Like I said previously, it's not something that I envisioned myself um, as previously, but now that I'm in this space, like I want to, you know, just continue to get better, you know, be able to, you know, have more confidence um, in, in scenarios and situations like this, be able to, you know, I consider myself to be, you know, a teacher by nature or a mentor. So if I can, you know, pass along any of, you know, my expertise or information along the way, um, that's really what, what gives me a sense of fulfillment. And that's ultimately what, what kind of drove me to, uh, you know, pursue restaurant consulting. I have have, you know, vast experience in the space. I have a lot of um, expertise. And if I can, you know, just, you know, it's going to sound corny or, or cheesy, but if I could just help one restaurant kind of get back on track or get back on their feet, you know, that'll be like an immense, um, you know, uh, immense sense of satisfaction for me. It's, it's, it's an industry that I love. Um, it's an industry that I know well, and, you know, it's something that I'm passionate about. And I'd like to, you know, I'd like to have people come to the area and put Hartford on the map in terms of, you know, this is the, you know, this is the place to be if you want like good food. It's not you know, all about the big cities. Like we can carve out a nice little, um, you know, niche here. So thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Joseph. And unfortunately, we are running a little short on time. So we don't have time to answer questions um, in time. But um, Joe, if you want to throw your email in the chat, um, so everyone sure. can connect with you. Um, Absolutely. They can 
questions. Also, um, this recording of the Timely Topics will be up on the CCEI website um, within the next week or so. So if you want to go back um, and listen through anything to ask other questions or share this with anyone in your network, please feel free to do so. Um, just quickly before we close out for today, um, our next Timely Topics is Wednesday, September 28th at 3 p.m. Um, it is with Maureen Ahern, and she will be presenting on how every success begins with an ask. So I want to thank you again um, for all the time you gave to us today, Joe, and um, for preparing for your presentation. We really appreciate all your insights. Thank you, Michaela. It was really wonderful to talk to you guys. Thank you again to all my support. And I have an incredible, you know, support system here at the university. Um, and, you know, if I can give back in any way, you know, whether it's answering questions, you know, meeting, talking on the phone, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful for, for the opportunity to, uh, you know, be able to, to pass along some of my, you know, expertise and knowledge, um, you know, and I'm not done learning myself. So, Get back with me in a couple months and we can have an even better talk. So thank you, Michaela. And you know, thank awesome. you to everybody uh, at CCI. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.